Yeah, great to see everybody here. Um, as we all know, we've come to listen to John Smith of Common Law Court fame, who has driven down from Dundee today to not only talk to us this evening, but also to accompany me to Westminster Magistrates Court tomorrow. Um, some of you will know that I've been charged uh, by the CPS for having the audacity to turn up at Speaker's Corner and criticise the government. <laughs> and for that, the politicised Metropolitan Police saw it fit to arrest me, cuff me, imprison me in their prison cell for six hours because of breaking a regulation, not a law. And tomorrow I will be appearing as a living man, answering a summons in the statute system, um, or acknowledging, acknowledging uh, the summons to appear in my living man status. Um, and as most of you know here who have studied uh, to any degree about common law, there is a massive difference between me, the living man, Geoffrey Wyatt, which I have registered that birth with John Smith at common law court, and the legal fiction, which I as a living man own that legal fiction, and it's that legal fiction that I have been... Uh, tortured I don't think it's too harsh a word you know six hours in a prison cell is torture and these people are trying to enslave me and tomorrow is my opportunity to remind the statute system that we in this country live under common law and I predicted what was going to happen to me was going to happen because back in November December last year I contacted John and I thought registering my living man birth with the common law court would give me a degree of protection and also the education that I've given myself since then about common law would have, would have protected me at my political rallies. But on the 16th of May, uh, when lockdown was uh, enforced and the regulation clearly stated that people were not allowed to gathering groups of two or more, I appeared at Speaker's Corner and I was confronted by a policeman under oath acting unlawfully, despite me saying to him I did not have his consent to enforce these regulations, he arrested and cuffed me and he has ignored my legitimate common law proper proclamation that I'm living under common law. So the next instalment of that arrest was on the 10th of July when um, I had to appear at Westminster Magistrates Court to um, clarify the situation at a plea hearing, which I refused to engage in the statute system. Um, I was due to appear at 10 o'clock in the morning and the magistrates took fright at my lack of cooperation with their statute system and they escalated my case up to a judge. And the judge kept me waiting until 10 past 6, all part of the programme of creating harassment and inconvenience. And at 10 past 6, we entered a courtroom and the judge just would not acknowledge my common law lawful submissions that I had previously sent to the court um, with cooperation from John. And uh, he would not acknowledge uh, what I was saying about me questioning the authority of the court. So I refused to engage with him. He entered a plea for me, and as a result of that, um, tomorrow's hearing um, is taking place, and my case is being combined with Piers Corbyn, who has got exactly the same charge, because he was arrested at the same time shortly after I was. So me and Piers Corbyn are uh, appearing at Westminster Magistrates tomorrow. So I've asked John to uh, help me throughout this year and, and John has uh, very helpfully uh, brought me along with um, educating me specifically to my political campaign here. Um, because common law, as we all know, or, or some of us in this room will know, encompasses, in, encompasses the whole facet of life. And for me, it was always about the politics. I know some people... Um, again, in this room, there's some people that have got a financial interest in how common law can help them. Um, 
some people use it for, for injurious situations, but for me, it's all about the politics. And for me, there doesn't get any more serious an issue than liberty and freedom. And common law is there to protect us. And they do not like it. The statute system do not like it. The policeman did not like it when I kept telling him I do not consent. The custody sergeant at Charing Cross Police Station didn't like where I was coming from. The CPS only this week presented me the written prosecution papers. They were due to lodge those at the court on August the 7th, but here we are just a few days before October the 23rd, and I only received them on Tuesday because they didn't know what to do with me. And Piers Corbyn, who is not using common law, he, he's employing a statute lawyer tomorrow, a friend of his from way back, and he's attacking it from that point of view. But I'm absolutely convinced that because of my common law submissions that I filed with the court back in July, they were tearing the hair out until this week on how to deal with me, which is why I've only received the documents this Tuesday. And the documents that they've sent me, um, uh, which is essentially what their prosecution against me is going to be, um, there is nothing there that I wasn't <coughs> expecting because I was there on the day as the living man. I told the police constable I'm the living man. I did not consent. So nothing, nothing was a surprise. Um, so I'm really looking forward to tomorrow <laughs> because I've got not only truth on my side, I've also got common law on my side and um, I've also got John Smith on my side, um, which is great. So that's a little bit of background about what I'm doing tomorrow. I know some of you are coming down and supporting me tomorrow. That is fantastic. Um, your support is, is, is gratefully appreciated. Me and Piers are actually expecting hundreds there outside the court, making a real solemn dance. Um, and for me very much part of tomorrow is promoting um, common law and promoting the protection that common law gives the ordinary person in this country because we have that benefit. We have that benefit of over 800 years ago, the barons acknowledging our freedom um, with Magna Carta. And Magna Carta didn't create the freedoms, all it did was acknowledge the freedoms. And then it was further acknowledged in 1689 with the Bill of Rights and that is our British constitution. And we have got a society now where the government are running roughshod over those freedoms that we've all in, uh, inalienably got within us. But all we need to do is claim those rights, which is what I'll be doing tomorrow. It's what I did on May the 16th. And I was not going to go anywhere. I had that placard. I had every single right as a free man to, stay, to say my stuff at Speaker's Corner of all places. And uh, there were 70, 80, 90, 100 people there, whatever it was. I gathered the, uh, the crowd gathered as, as I got arrested, um, which, uh, which was a good thing. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Um, tomorrow's gonna be a, 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 big, a big moment for common law, a big moment for British justice, frankly, because as all of us in this room will know and believe, we have got a tyrannous government acting well beyond its legitimacy at the moment and they need to be held into account and I'm going to do my little bit tomorrow um, by holding this government into account and I know Piers Corbyn is doing exactly the same thing so the two of us are the test cases. We are, to my knowledge, we're the first people to actually face a court or to face a, a summons to appear, as in my case, because I don't accept the authority of the court. Um, Piers, to be clear, is accepting the authority of the court and is um, challenging in that uh, uh, authority from a, from, a, from a statute point of view within the system. So tomorrow it will all be revealed. So that's a little bit of background about why we're here. Um, John's going to talk to us about what common law represents, because I know some of us here have got not much knowledge of uh, the protection that common law can give us. So there is no better man in the country to give us a, a background of, of, of how he came into um, uh, being so involved and so expert on the concept of common law and, uh, and, and what brought us to this day. So I'll, uh, I'll hand over to Colin. Uh, to, 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 to John. Uh, how do you follow on from that? Um, first of all, this is, I think, uh, nice to be back again. I've seen a few familiar faces here. 
it's nice to come through. Um, tomorrow we're in court. Uh, it's going to be unique uh, because we're finding it very, very difficult to get into courts. Uh, the existing system and the courts they have, they're not courts, they're places of business. Uh, basically, they're trying very hard to keep us out of the courts. They don't want to deal with living men and women simply because they can't. Now, for those of you, I don't, I don't like repeating myself, but what we'll actually do is I'll give you a quick run through as to how this came about, how it was set up, and basically what we're actually doing with this. The concept, I, a number of years back, is there's no point in going into the full story, but I had a, a, a nice career, a nice job, nice salary, a successful career. Unfortunately, I then went to work for a couple of dodgy directors who were criminals. Uh, the industry I was in was regulated by the government. I left to protect myself, uh, which has been proven time and time again. The directors eventually, eight years later, were found out and the business was closed down. So I've proven that was correct. However, because it was monitored and regulated by the government, they decided, because they had been negligent, they didn't want the public to know. So they closed it down, but then I suffered. I lost everything, career, ended up bankrupt, everything. Now, the interesting thing was, I think at the time, I've gone back a while now, I must have been 30, early 30s, uh, I decided, uh, being a fool, I would then go to the court to obtain justice. Now, going to court thinking it was a court of law, um, I couldn't have been more wrong. But I actually learned a hard lesson, because going to the court to try and obtain justice, I found out very, very quickly when I spoke to a judge that doesn't exist within their system. Now, there's various things I can't explain to you about the system and how it works. What I will say, uh, all the points that I mentioned just now can be verified. If you go on and do your own research, it, they are facts. I'm quite happy, I've stood up in many places in courts as well and argued the points, but they are facts. Now, first of all, every court in this country, not only here, but internationally as well, every court is a corporation, it's a registered company. They're not there for the law, they're not a court, they're a registered company and they run for profit. That's it. It has nothing to do with justice. So if you think the courts have anything to do with justice, forget. No fact this is, is ever tried in court, that's the whole world. No fact is ever tried in court. Yeah. Well basically what to do is when you're dealing with these simple facts, as you learn how the system works, it became apparent after a number of years through fighting the system, that you'll never ever beat them. Because basically you're taking on the system, you're dealing with them in their own playground and you're using their rules. It will never ever work. Now I'm not here to knock the system, because I actually quite like it. If you think of what's been achieved in the UK, but not only here, worldwide as well, in different communities, they've set up a structure for the people to live by, which is quite good. Now within the UK, we had a system here which has been developed for hundreds of years, and it's quite good if it works correctly. The problem we have is the people that run the system. They're incompetent and they're criminals. And until such time as these people are removed, the system will never work correctly. And this is what you have to do. Now, when you start looking at that, you then look at the issue in relation to courts, which I did. If you look at a court situation and you're trying to obtain justice, it's not going to work. You'll never ever get justice within their system. So I quickly came out and said, well, look, if you can't get justice there, there has to be another way around it. Now, I was fortunate enough that I'd set up a, a close group of people that I'd worked with in Scotland, and we sort of debated various things, and we thought, well, look, if we can't do it in their system, set up your own system. So we then looked at it. Now, we use the term common law. As a Scotsman, that doesn't go down well. <laughs> it tends to be an English one, but it's not. It says common law, it says goes back hundreds of years, but common law is the same throughout the world. It just used different names. I was speaking to people over France not long ago, they like the concept, they don't like common law, but it's English. They like the term universal law, they like natural law, it's exactly the same. It could be law of the land, it could be God's law, it could be the creator's law, whatever you want to call it. They are all exactly the same. They work and operate under basic principles cause no harm, cause no loss, cause no injury, and ensure you're honourable in your contractual dealings. That is it. And all these things are applicable to each one of the headings. So you can tag on any name you want, depending on where you stay, 
uh, race, colour, religion, it doesn't matter. This is applicable to everyone. And people can use this. Now, we're not only suffering in this country, but it's happening all over the world because of what's happening with the state. They've devised a system here, and like it, or, like it or lump it, the people are slaves. I found out not so long ago it was quite good because I believe slavery was abolished hundreds of years ago. It wasn't. Um, I found out shortly afterwards, it's actually up on the site, on the Common Law Court website, uh, we found out that after slavery was supposedly abolished, um, it was William Wilberforce, it kept putting up the bill, and I don't know if you'd seen the film, it was Amazing Grace, it was quite good, I enjoyed the film. I actually got a couple of, uh, I got some information from it, which was quite good, but basically they kept putting forward the bill to abolish slavery and eventually they got it passed. So from that date, effectively, slavery was abolished. That wasn't the case, because we found out through the Hansard Papers, which is the papers of the court, uh, the hearings at the House of Parliament, they're actually lodged in Parliament, and we've put a copy on the website. When they actually abolished slavery, they said to the people, look, we cannot have people here bound into slavery. This is ridiculous. You cannot do that. We're going to set up a new society and everyone's equal. Everyone's equal here. You will become part of this new society. You're going to get privileges. So here, here are these privileges. This is what you'll get. You'll all come on board with this new thing. All they were doing is instead of taking one small group of people who were slaves, they said, well, you're no longer slaves. But what we're going to do is encompass everyone and say, right, you're all now slaves. And that's how they've done it. It's quite clever <laughs> the way they've done it. But says they didn't realise that they would eventually be challenged on it. But this is actually on the site, and it's come from government. It's a way they've done it. They haven't abolished slavery. They've actually hidden it and disguised it. So if you look at something, uh, I was speaking to someone earlier on today, uh, we've used it on the Commonwealth website as well, just to try and establish the fact that tomorrow, Jeff is going to be in court. When you go to court, what they're going to try and do is establish joinder. Uh, as in contract, they want authority and jurisdiction over the individual. Uh, they'll classify him as a defendant. Well, he's not a defendant. Uh, it's not even a court, it's a corporation. Uh, but this is what they've got to try and do. Now, for those of you who are a bit older, and there's a few younger people here, but I'm hoping some of you are older, you may record, you may remember the television series Roots in the 70s and 80s. Really, really good. It was about slavery and what happened when they took the slaves over to America. But to get the point across here is criminal coercion. What they did is they took the main lead, uh, the main slave that came over, uh, his name was Kunta Kinte. And when he went to the plantation, the slave owner had said to him, right, you now have a new name. Your name is now Toby, which he wouldn't accept. So they got the charge hand to tie him up, string him up, and lash him. Now they lashed him that much, he was nearly dead. It says just about when he was dead, the charge hand they kept saying, your name is Toby. At which point he says, no, my name's Kunta Kinte. They carried on, and eventually, in his last breaths, he says, my name's Toby. That's him gone. As soon as he'd done that, he accepted it, he's then a slave. He's a slave, the slave owner owns him, and the slave owner rules apply. This is what's going to happen tomorrow with Jeff. Jeff's going into court. Now, they're not, uh, they're not actually giving him a brand new name, right? but they are treating him as a slave, because what they will say to him tomorrow is the last for his name, he will give his name as a living man. And when he gives his name as a living man, they will not accept it. In their courts, because it's commercial, they deal with contracts. It's all contractual law. Now, when they deal with contracts, they need to get a contractual joiner with you. So they cannot deal with a living man or a living woman. So they do not want him to be a living man. So what they're going to say to him tomorrow can you confirm your name is Mr. Jeffrey Wyatt? Now, if he accepts that, what he's done is accepted the position of the slave and their rules, so they can prosecute him and do whatever they want. That's the way it works. If he dares to stand up and say, no, I'm not Mr. Jeffrey Wyatt, then obviously they will punish him. They'll try different things. They'll say, they'll find you in contempt of court, they'll put you downstairs, or they'll find him. That's what they do. That's what the system works on. It's fear. Now, the interesting thing about these judges, we've actually used some of the things in reverse, because when you look at the system and how they operate, they're binding people into slavery, they're actually attaching a legal title onto a living man or woman, and they're saying, here, this is a title, you're going to take ownership of the title. 
but I need to make money, so I'm going to penalise the title, and you're going to pay me the money for the title. That's what happens. It's the way it works. Now, to get back, if I go back slightly, when we set up the Common Law Court, we decided to set up a system that's applicable to everyone, and that everyone can use. Now, it's not a registered company, it's not a company. All the Common Law Court is, is a lawful process, which anyone can use throughout the world. And they can use it to protect themselves, and it provides a lawful remedy for everyone. So anyone can use it. There's no cost involved. Everything on the site, it says, confirms your position, and you can record information, and it's all free. So there's no charges. So you can use the information there, and with the certificate you get and reference numbers to defend yourself. So it's not about money, it's about protecting the people. Now it was set up there, but what we did is we had to distinguish between one or two things. I remember going to a co-op in Scotland uh, once with a friend, and we went in, and I'd done it myself personally as well, and stopped in co-op and said, well, I'm a living man. And the judge says, yeah, okay, so what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheerio, not interested. Uh, some of the judges will actually say to you, well, that's fine, but I can't hear you or I can't see you. It doesn't mean they're blind or deaf. It literally means they cannot deal with him because he's a living man. They cannot, they do not have joined her, they cannot deal with him. They've got no authority over a living man. But what they then do is then, then say, well, I'm not dealing with you, it doesn't really matter. And they continue against the legal fiction. In my case, Mr. John Smith. But that's a slave name. So we had to work out how to be it. Now, what you do is we created as you stood the people turn around and say, well, what you need to do is you need to confirm that you're living. And it sounds stupid. I'm hoping some of the people here wouldn't have actually signed up to the common law court site. Because if you haven't, it means you don't exist under common law. Now, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but the point is, if I turn around and I've seen people here and I'll go out and I speak to someone tomorrow, I say, I met a lot of nice people last night, and I try to pinpoint someone, and they say, who was it you spoke to? If I try to explain who you are, or try to confirm who you are, the only thing I could do is ask for ID. You have a driving license, you have a national insurance card, you have a passport, um, you could have uh, credit cards, bank cards, uh, you could have loan papers, council tax papers. All these things are issued to the legal fiction. There's nothing issued to the living man or woman. You don't exist. So apart from you saying you exist as a living man or woman, I can actually come up, put my hand in someone and say, right, okay, I can feel you, you're living. I see that. But if I leave here, I can't explain to anyone else in the world that you exist because there's no record of you. So what we did is set up a process <coughs> under common law whereby people can submit a declaration. So people can turn around and say, hold on a minute, I exist, I'm living. I'm a man, I'm a mom, woman. This is my birth details. This is where I come from. So they make a declaration and confirm that they exist. Now the difference doing that, we went to court, and when we went to court with the same judge, went back to the court with a certificate for the common law court, and went before the judge and said, you can't proceed, you have no jurisdiction. He says, yes I do, it's my court. I said, no you don't, it's not a court. You don't have jurisdiction. We're a living man. No, I couldn't care less, I've got jurisdiction. He went on, I said, no you don't. Look at the documents, the exhibits, and the case file. He says, pardon? He says, look at the documents of the birth certificate, and he picked it up and looked at it. It was, it was submitted as evidence. He opened it and read it. It was a birth certificate issued by the Common Law Court. Now, by issuing this certificate, it means it's a court document. It's a legal court deed. It can never, ever be challenged. Right? We deal with lawful. They deal with legal, but even in their system, they can't challenge it. So it's a legal deed. Right? Not only that, he says, this, this certificate has been issued by the people because the common law court is the people. I'm not the common law court. It's impossible for me to be the common law court. The common law court is a jury. It's a jury of 12 or more if you want, but a minimum of 12. It's the people that are the jury, the people that create the law, the people that make the law. You have the power and the authority. That's the way it works. Now, basically, that's what it boils down to. So when we took this paper and gave it to the judge and says, look, this is issued, it's a court deed, it's been issued by the people, it carries with it the authority, the judge then turned around and said, right, okay, okay then, okay, I'll acknowledge it. I do not have authority over a living man, which he admitted in court. 
And we'd say, fine, okay, thank you very much. He says, however, I'm going to proceed. Now, he's going to proceed against the fiction because he, doesn't, he can't touch the man, but we knew he couldn't touch the man. He says, right, I'm going to proceed anyway. I'm going to proceed against Mr. John Smith. I said, no, hold on a minute. Before you do that, look at the paperwork. He looked again and said, look at the paperwork. If you look at the paperwork, you'll find in front of you there's a second form. The second form is a court deed, and it's confirming ownership of the legal title. I own it. And he just put a pause. What do you mean you own it? I said, I own it. I own the fiction. You've no authority. You can't proceed. I'm not dealing with this. I'm adjourning it for two months, and you run out of court. <laughs> now, the only, reason, the only reason you can actually do this, right, when you're born, for those of you who don't know, I says, when you're born, the state uh, create about well, obviously through the birth certificate, they create a legal title for you, a fiction, a legal entity, they create the person, right? It doesn't exist, it's not living, it's just a contract, it's a title, but they use it throughout your life for contractual dealings. They make money off you, that's the way it works, but they need this title. So it was created at your birth. Now, when they created it, they got your parents to register a birth certificate. That then gave them permission and the information they wanted to create this legal title. That's the way it worked. But, having looked at the common law court and discussed it with people, we said, but that's not right. Because if we're living men and women, we've confirmed that, they can't do that against us. And I thought, well, stop, think about it. So the way it works out is, you then think about the system, what they're doing. First of all, because it involves more than one party, it involves the child, it involves the parents, and it involves the government. According to their rules, it's a contract, because it involves more than one person. If it's a contract, contractual law applies. Right? So you look at contract law. Now, for a contract to be valid, there has to be six or seven points. They're all nice points, but forget them. Just forget them. Just pick one. One easy. Make it simple. Contract law states, for a valid contract, it says there has to be full disclosure. That means that each one of the parties has to know exactly what's happened. I've never been told what they did with my fiction. They never told my parents and the government have hidden it. So therefore, according to their rules, the contract is void, it's valid, it's invalid. Now if a contract is void, it means that the use of that fiction by the state is criminal and it's a crime against the people. And that's what they've been doing. So they're doing that for every, every individual in the country. They're doing this worldwide. They do it in courts all the time, every day. It's they're binding the people into slavery. Now, having done that and hidden this from the people, what they've done is created this fiction. But because I like their rules, because the rules are quite good, hold them to it. Go back to their rules. It says if a contract is void and invalid, it has to go back to the start. And basically it means the state cannot use the legal title. So the legal title, Mr. John Smith in my case, they can't use it because it's fraud. So therefore, what we said to the people is we sat down and had a chat with quite a few people and said, look, who should the rightful owner be if there is a fiction? If you go into your purses, your wallets, your pockets, you'll have something. You'll have a bank card, a driving license, maybe even a passport or something. You'll have some sort of notification with a title on it. Now, if that's the case just now, it exists. If you wish to use a cash line, if you wish to go and drive or something, you wish to use a license, you use all these things. It exists, so the legal fiction is written on them. So would you want to just go away, give away the legal fiction and get rid of it and try flying somewhere without a passport? Or try driving or going to a car thing and putting a, a, a card in a machine with no name? It won't work. So the point is the legal fiction does exist. So if we accept the fact that it exists, we know what it is, what we have to do is protect the people. So the only way to protect the people is to make sure that the people take ownership of the legal title. So therefore, because it was created fraudulently, it's not legal in their system, it is fraud, and it means someone else can put in a claim for ownership. So on the website, once you have confirmed your birth by making a declaration, you exist as a living man or woman. Because you've confirmed that stance, you then are entitled to say, hold on a minute, there has been a legal fiction attached to me, I'm aware of it, I'm aware it was created fraudulently, therefore I now want to claim ownership. So when you submit the information on the site, what you're doing is you're making an application for ownership. 
and providing you've actually confirmed with your declaration of birth that you exist, you're automatically then given ownership of the fiction. And then that creates another lawful deed with a serial number and it confirms you as the owner. So, go back to the court when we was in court, we said to the judge, first of all, you can't proceed against me because I'm a living man. Look at my birth certificate. That has been issued by the common law court. It's a lawful deed and it's issued with the authority of the people. They can't challenge it. There must be, we lost count, there must be over a thousand of these documents issued to various authorities. Now, authorities, you can mention any authority you want, whether it's councils, whether it's banks, solicitors, uh, judges, courts, uh, police, hospitals, social services, anyone, everyone's got them. What I can confirm is we have not heard of any one certificate ever being challenged because it comes with the authority of the people and it's a lawful court deed, so nobody's challenged it. Not only that, we've got governments, including the Australian government, have accepted a common law birth certificate and based on a common law birth certificate have given permanent residency to two young children because the mother wouldn't get them a state birth certificate but she got them a common law birth one and when she produced that and handed it over to the government the government accepted it as a lawful document and granted permanent, uh, permanent residency for the children uh, not only that within the courts in this country they've accepted that the common law court exists they've accepted the fact we convene our courts uh, and we issue paperwork which is obviously lawful deeds they said they carry with it the weight of the people, the authority of the people. They've accepted that, they don't like it, but they've had to accept that it exists. We've actually had someone who was manhandled by the police and actually assaulted by the police, um, decided that he would take out a claim against the police. So he lodged paperwork and wanted to lodge a criminal report. Now the police had said they'd deal with it, but they didn't. So it was about 10 days later, we'll go back to the police and say, what's happening with this crime report? They say, uh, oh, no, no, we've got 28 days to deal with that. I said, well, why have you got 28 days? He says, well, 28 days to report or respond to any complaint. He says, it's not a complaint. They're trying to obviously get rid of it and classify it as a complaint instead of a crime. So we said, no, it's not a complaint, it is a crime. We're lodging this, you will take this criminal report. They weren't happy about it, but when we pushed it, they said, right, OK, we'll accept it. He said, but before we're going to investigate anyone, we need you to provide proof of ID. We need something with your address on it. We need, obviously, something with your name on it. And we need something with photographic ID. So the individual concerned submitted his birth certificate under the Common Law Court. He submitted his ownership of the legal fiction from the Common Law Court. And he presented a Common Law Court card with his photo on it. So he presented that to the police. Within one week, they came back, returned these documents, thanked them for providing the proof and confirmed that it was acceptable as proof of ID. So the police, not only one, we've had three different forces all accepting these documents, this proof of ID. They cannot do anything. We've actually issued court documents to judges, politicians, and prosecute them. Now, if what we're doing was wrong, we'd all be in jail. But it's not. It's lawful, and we can do it. We've issued court summonses to hold them accountable for the crimes they're committing against the people, and they can't do anything about it. So they haven't been able to do anything about it. So the system is set up. We're at the situation just now. This has only been going about three and a half years. But if you argue or you wish to defend yourself just now, um, use, use a scenario as everyone's seen in the old westerns, cowboy westerns. It says you don't go into a gunfight and hand the opposition a gun that's full of bullets. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's stupid. He said, but the thing is, that's what happens. He says, if you're going to fight with someone, I'll go and fight with them. I'll give them a gun, but I'll have no bullets in it. I don't mind that. <coughs> I've got a problem with that. But the point is, that's what you do. So why would you use their system? If you use their system, they create the rules, they change the rules, and even if the rules are there, they don't comply with them, and nobody holds them accountable. But why do that? Create your own rules. You have the authority, the power. So what we'd like to do is turn around and say that, look, we've set this up just now for the people. We have people using this facility, this setup, from 137 countries now in the world. So you have 137 countries. People have signed up and submitted declarations of birth. There are thousands of them, and they're doing it all over. So that's how it is, and it's applicable everywhere. 
and it's basically standing up for your birth rights, your inherent rights, it's in protecting yourself. And this system works. Now, what we've actually done, if you think about it, the system that they have just now, they relate to, you, obviously, the court system they operate, the justice system, right? It's been operating a long, hundreds of years. Uh, Jeff had mentioned Magna Carta years ago. He said it went back 12, 15. Uh, 100 years later in Scotland, we had the Declaration of Lord Roth, and you've had various other documents since then throughout the world. He says all these documents have been put in place to develop a system which, if it's working correctly, it should protect the people, but it doesn't because of the crime being committed against the people and because they're binding you into slavery. So he says what we need to do is sort out the corruption and obviously get this operating the way it should. Now, when you do that, it says you can then move forward and work with the people until such time as these people are obviously held accountable for the crimes they're committing, it's not going to work. But if you think about what's been achieved, over hundreds of years, go back to Magna Carta, which was 1215, if you want. Go back to then. If you think about the court system, the justice system, in this country, even abroad, if you go back and think about it, what you've got is you've got a justice system that's run by the state. At the time, this is Magna Carta was set up, it was King John, but he says you've got the kings, you've got obviously the barons, you've then got the court system, uh, you've got the constables as well. All of these people that operate within the system, they do so under the state, the state authority. Whether it's a state uh, or whether it's a sovereign, the, the, the king or the queen, they do this and set it up. Now, we've never ever had a system whereby the courts were run by men and women. Now, what we've actually achieved and we've got the state to accept is that for the first time ever throughout the world, you have a common law court system. This system is set up by the people, it's run for the people, and it has no state involvement, and it's run solely to protect the people. That's the first time that's happened. Now, that's been established. It's never happened before. What we're actually looking to do just now in the near future is the people involved with the co-op, and obviously it says, and I'm speaking with people, I'm speaking with you, everyone, people put forward ideas, and we discuss it, and we think about the practicalities, and then we move forward. This is the things that we use, a lot of the things we use have been taken from people coming up with ideas, so we develop it. Unfortunately, because it's, there's so many issues we deal with, it takes time to get into place. But what we're actually looking at now is setting up and developing an enforcement team. Now, the enforcement team is not there to basically lay them along and have someone stand in the corner with a machine gun. It's an enforcement is basically to, uh, to enforce... To, uh, well, yeah. well, things like that, what we're actually doing with the enforcement side just now, we're looking to get constables on board. I said, with constables, we have them, and they will be there to assist and protect the people, which is fine. This can be done just now, and I said, they'll actually be trained, and we have many people interested in taking up a position and helping out with that. That is something. If you look at the COVID restrictions and what's happening just now with the government and the legislation they're passing out, bearing in mind, it's rules. They say that how many times they tell you themselves they're rules and guidelines. They're not laws. Unless you're consenting, mm -hmm. they're not laws. But basically, they say they're putting you these things. Many of the people are stepping forward now within the medical industry, which are doing a great job. They're actually stepping forward now as whistleblowers to explain what's currently happening. And yet they're rewarded by losing their licences. So it's ridiculous. But the point is, what they forget, or what they don't realise, is that they may lose their licence to operate under their system, but it doesn't matter. They can operate under common law. So basically, we're looking to help these people and support them so people within the medical industry can still continue to operate under common law. So you can actually do that. And they're not bound by the state, and they're not bound by Big Pharma. They can do that and set up. So the common law court is setting up a system to address the feelings in the, 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 the statutory system. Now, realistically, the common law court and these things should never ever be used. The point is, when the system corrects itself, the system is in place to run and to operate correctly. Until such time as the criminals who run it are taken, removed or replaced, you need something to check it, a counter check. You need somebody to hold them accountable. That's the people and that's the common law court, which is the highest court. So therefore, if people are committing crimes, they will be held accountable and it will be the people who do so using this. When 
things are put right, the common law court can take a smaller place. It will still remain in the background to hold them accountable for it. But that's returning the power, power back to the people. Now, the people can decide to do whatever they want. How they wish to operate is not a problem. The other thing we'll say just now is just to clarify one or two points. I've spoken to a few people tonight and they've come forward with various things about the common law court is not attached to anyone. It's not, it doesn't deal with anyone. The common law court is only a lawful process, right? Now, while we've mentioned things, uh, somebody speaks to me about when you, you write your names. You write your names just now and they're certain we are doing things. Uh, they used to be dog and they go on about things. The gentleman's going on about syntax, grammar, all these things. That's really good. I like syntax grammar. I'm not fully aware of it because I don't fully understand it. But the point is, if you use something like that, it's to address the failings in their system, but you're arguing in their system again. Now, if you do that, we stay away from their system. And it's the same with, it's the same with, it's the same with obviously signing your name. When you sign a name a certain way, or you put a title, you're doing that. And when you put the title down or write a certain way, you're giving consent away. No, you're not. You're entitled to write your name any way you want. You're entitled to put uh, use anything you want. It doesn't matter. As long as you make your stance under common law and you confirm that you're a living man or woman, providing you do this, you'll be okay. Um, on a final point just now, I don't know how long this will answer some questions later on. The final point I'll make just now is just to show you how idiotic that their system is just now. We're dealing with an issue tomorrow and Jeff's going to court. Well, what happened not so long ago, I was speaking to a friend in Portsmouth and he actually done this in court. It was quite clever because what happens is when you go to court, first of all, they will not accept you as a living man or woman. So that's the first thing. If you try to push this point that you're a living man or woman, the judge will get fed up and eventually they will then turn around and question uh, your mental stability. <laughs> and they'll actually want you to be examined. right? And I've actually seen them and thrown people in the jail to be assessed as well. So we started and I said, well, what we'll do is we'll change it around. So this guy was going to court and I said, right, you know what's going to happen? He says, yes, I know. He's already says that I'm mentally unstable. I said, fine. Well, what to do is go into the court and then play it like this. So he went in and said he was a living man. And when he said he was a living man, the judge said, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. I'm not starting all this again. <laughs> uh, and he said, look, and then when he'd been discussing it for about five minutes, then he kicked in and I says, say this. So what he did is he waited for about five minutes so there was a, a conversation. He then turned around and he says to the judge, I'm concerned, I'm sorry, I'm concerned. And the judge just paused and he said, what do you mean you're concerned? He said, I'm concerned about you. <laughs> <laughs> the judge looked at him, he says, what do you mean me? He says, well, you've been chatting to me for about five minutes. He goes, yeah. He says, well, for somehow, he says, you don't have the mental capacity to determine I'm a living man. <laughs> and he looked at it. He says, you've been speaking to me for five minutes. He says, not only that, if I pretend to be a dead fiction, you're telling me that you're happy to converse with the dead. Uh -huh. He says, if I told you I spoke to the dead, I'd be bunged up in a nut house. <laughs> he says, therefore, before you proceed, I want you mentally assessed. <laughs> and the judge says, I'm not listening to this. Quasar adjourned and he run out of court. And he's, since then, he's had four different hearings and they've all been cancelled. So when we put in paperwork just now, what we do when we put the paperwork in, we say that we will attend, as if they require a hearing, we will attend, but we're attending only for clarification purposes. So they have no authority, they have no consent. However, it's as if they wish to obviously go to a place, a court, and they require us to attend, we're happy to comply for clarification only, but we're only prepared to do so if we have a judge that is mentally competent. We require a judge who will be able to determine a living man or a living woman standing before him. If he can't do that, they're not mentally stable to sit on the bench. And not only that, if a judge does say he will accept the position of a living man or woman, they automatically lose because they have no authority over a living man or woman. So what we then say is if that's the case, we'd also like you, the court to confirm that the judge cannot speak to the dead. Because if he does... He's not mentally competent to be on the bench. And that's it. So they can't proceed. And that's using their system against them. Yeah. That's how stupid it is. But that's the way it is. But remember, when they're using this system, everything they have police. Police are registered companies. So it says the police are not there for policing. <laughs> they're there for uh, fines. They're there to make money. They're corporations. 
the courts are the same. The courts are registered companies. The judges are registered companies. He said, we've got one just now. He said, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at taking a case just now. I said, it's Boris Johnston and Nicola Sturgeon. Believe it or not, they're both registered companies, yeah. uh, which is it's ludicrous. They're not actually standing up as a living man or woman. They're actually trying to run the country, and they're actually saying, here, this is what we are. They're fictions. That's all it is. They're persons. A person is a corporation. That's the way it works. So if you can get out of their house, their rules, their play park, their rules, you'll be okay. You've got to get out, stand out, do not use a system, do not use anything. It's the same when we're doing it. If you go in, use allergy with a gunfight, if you go into a fight with someone and you're going to dispute it, why give them a gun? That's bad enough in the first place. But if you then want to argue with one of their rules, it's effectively giving them a bullet and saying, here, stick that bullet in. The more you have joined up with them and the more you debate their system and their rules, the more bullets you're giving them. Well, I wouldn't touch it with a basketball. He says, stay out of their system. You're a living man, a living woman, claim your rights. He says, have used the common law court, which it's for, establish your position and pass it on. He says, that's how it is, it's simple. The common law court as a people is there to provide a lawful remedy and hopefully we'll get a result tomorrow with Jeff. Okay? But there are many, many cases coming up just now, so if you keep an eye on the website just now, that will be ideal, there will be information going up. And what we will say just now, <laughs> I've been speaking to people tonight, you can only apologise because this was set up. I convened the first common law court, it was on the 11th of June, 2017. So it was convened then, but for three and a half years, uh, we've been doing quite well. But basically when we set up, the conditions of having a court hearing is that the information is published somewhere. So it's made public. We set up a website, which is a four page site, and we says here, here's the result. When we done that, we set up with a name, Scottish Common Law Court, because it was in Scotland. Then everyone over the UK contacted me and said, this is really good, that, can we use it? I said, of course you can. <laughs> You're the people. And they said, ah, but it says Scottish Common Law Court. I said, no, it was in Scotland. He said, that's it. Oh, no, no, but it says Scottish. I said, look, forget it. Three months later, we got fed up. I thought, I saw this. So we changed the name. It was then Common Law Court Great Britain. So we put that up. A couple of months later, we get people from America, Australia, Canada, and says, this is really good, can we not use it as well? So we got fed up, so we changed it finally, so it's uh, Common Law Court, in, uh, Great Britain and International, so it's covered everyone. So it's there and it stays there, but we've now got 137 countries, so they use this. The people use the same, pr the same process, they work together. Now obviously what we're doing is we're developing that, we've got a lot of helpers on now, uh, we did have a problem not so long ago, so obviously with the amount of entries we're getting in applications, uh, but we are a small team and obviously we are working now. Uh, we get thousands of emails daily, I said, which is a nightmare, but obviously we've got people answering them and these people are being trained up as well. Uh, it's not great, but it happens and we've got to get through. I know here people say, oh, I waste of time, they never get back and things like that. We can't physically answer them all. <coughs> so unless it's urgent, as is ideally, don't yeah, email. Yeah? No, international actually means in past yesterday. No. Because past means what actual words actually mean. Uh, IN means no, TER means terror, and national means people, and uh, AL means contracts. So it basically means no contracts. Yeah, my, that's, that's fine, that's fine. But what I would say just now, the guy set it up is brilliant, it's good. It's passed away, but it's really good. No, it's clever. But the point is, there's not many people understand it. I haven't looked in enough to obviously no, I, to look. Well, 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 you can actually get David Wynne Miller or um, yeah. Russell J. Gould to write you uh, an actual proper um, passage. Well, first of all, David Wynne Miller's passed away. I know. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say just now, in relation to this, the one point we'll make is when you use something like this, first of all, it's really good. It addresses flaws within the existing system. But in doing so, you then go to the system to argue the point. Now, the judges are in the system don't even understand it. He says, so you're arguing with judges that are incompetent, don't understand, and even if you go in and you're successful, they won't accept it because it's their rules. So although it's good, he says, if you don't use it and you fight them out of the system, they can never win. As soon as you put them back into the system and you use something that they can deal with, they just dismiss it. It's like giving them another bullet, you're in their system. We'd prefer not to give them it and say, well, we're not using it, it's good, it's great, but you're arguing in their system. We're not wanting their system. Their system is a corporation. It's a registered company. We're here to defend people. 
and to provide a lawful remedy, so we have to give you the structure that is out of the system. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can I just ask a question? Yes. Is we here at Transit for a common law court for this region yeah. area. Yeah. But we don't, obviously, we want uh, everyone to have at least make the effort to report their own birth. Uh -huh. So there's, there needs to be something, if people are going to do this regionally, mm -hmm. The yeah. understanding of the common law, there needs to be some communication between the small regional yeah. common law courts and you as the major database of everyone's recording. So, yeah. how can we get that dialogue going? What we're doing just now, the common law court, there are things happening in the background just now, certainly in the coming weeks and months, is it's developing, now it's changing, we're taking in more people. So, you'll find in the coming months there'll be a lot of the issues that you raise will be addressed. We've got additional training materials going up. There will be videos, uh, educational videos. We'll get more people involved. There is a forum. It's a way to start taking off. We've set up administrators there, uh, so they're obviously going to deal with the forums. And we've got people in different countries that we're hoping to do international Zooms as well, and we've got the contacts available. We'll have contacts throughout the countries as well, so you can deal with them, and we'll have people that will be able to assist in convening courts, so you can get that. The thing about the co-op is what we said just now, if people confirm the standing um, as a living man or woman, they can use common law, which is fine. If you convene a co-op, uh, it's not essential that everyone is actually uh, registered with the common law co-op. All that would need to be established on the day in question is that if anyone turns up for a court hearing on the day, they have to understand that they cannot appear there as a fiction and that they, if they take part, they will do so as a living man or living woman. So providing they consent to that, uh, they can then take part in it, but they would then have to sign the appropriate paperwork to confirm that stance. But that's assuming, that's assuming that you're using the common law court system to protect people. If you are going to have a court hearing and you're going to be involved in To hold the people accountable, yeah. yeah. So well, we can actually do that, but the thing is, it's still applicable there because if you're going to hold someone accountable for damages, he says you then take them and put them in front of a common law jury. He says, but any of the people are there on the day in question, providing they're there as living men and women and they're not representing the fiction, they can't actually deal with it because the common law court is the people. I, I don't know, you've charged for the owner, I just assume you own paper, I don't pass to John. Yeah. Why should I ask yeah. John and just say I'm a living man? Put the paper in before and fix the only, paper, yeah. I am the beneficiary of that. The only, the only thing I would say just now is getting back again to explain how this works. What we do is when we looked at this just now, if you turn round as one in, I have a friend in Scotland, right? This guy, has, he, he stands by what we call the Declaration of Our Brother. It's great. I love it. He says because it's quite unique, because it achieved certain things that other documents didn't. The Declaration of Our Broth was in 1320, so it's 105 years after Magna Carta. Now the good thing was, depends on how you look at it, at the time it was to do with, uh, you remember from Braveheart, Robert the Bruce. Uh, well what had happened is basically Edward had taken obviously over Scotland and he'd obviously won the battle and said right, we're taking over, we're removing everyone's wealth, the lands, the property, everything. Now, Robert the Bruce and the Barons equivalent in Scotland had turned around and said, look, we can't do this. So they needed help. So what they did is they went to uh, an abbey, uh, the foremost abbey in Scotland at the time was Arbroath, and they spoke to an abbey there, and they've actually constructed, it was an, a letter, but it's actually known as the Declaration of Arbroath. And what they've done is they've actually wrote this letter, but the letter went to the Pope, who at the time was the authority in the world. Now, bearing in mind that everyone fell under the, the jurisdiction of the church, what had happened is the Scots nobles, it says the, the, the Pope at the time, he says, look, we're noble Scotsmen. He says, we're born here and we're born sovereign. He says, we will never ever succumb to the rule of the English. He says, they are trying to rape, murder, pillage, everything, the state, and they're going to basically finish us off. We stand with the church, we stand with your authority, and we stand with you. We need protection, we need help. They cannot come to our lands and finish us off. Effectively, it was genocide. He said they wanted to get rid of the Scots. So the Scots had wrote and said, look, we stand with you, the Pope. We need your help. So the Pope had a choice. He could have either turned around and said, well, I'm not accepting that. Let the English do what they want. It would have been genocide. They would have just got rid of the Scots. Or he would have turned around and said, well, hold on a minute. The Scots are on my side. 
the Scots are obviously bowing to the Pope, the Scots are coming in here and all they need is help. So what I'll do is I'll get the English to leave me alone, I'll accept their position and we'll stop the crimes against the Scots. So they actually issued a ruling. Now, what you did is you had the Scots submitting a declaration of a oath. You had the English who were held, this is in place because of the declaration of a oath, and you have the church who accepted that and gave it the authority it wanted. Now, that is all quite good, but the interesting part is that what the document says, there's a phrase in it, it says something along the lines is, as long as 100 of us stand together, we will never, under any circumstances, it says, be held accountable to English rule. Words along that line. And basically it says, uh, we will fight, to the, if need be, we'll fight to the death to prove that. Right? Now what that's done is that means that the church, even the crown in England, uh, and obviously the governments, have all accepted the fact that if you have a hundred men or women, it was men that turned out in the Indies, if you have a hundred men, strong women, stand together, you have the authority to challenge and take on the government in a crown with 100 people. So what we did is we, with a declaration for the common law court, we created one and we used some of the language taken from the declaration of our both. We inserted it and what we've did, unlike any other document, we have the Magna Carta, you've got the Declaration of Abroad, Declaration of Independence, you've got Bill of Rights, various things. These documents are signed, and like Magna Carta are signed by the Barons, but there's only 20, 30, maybe 40 signatures. But the magic number is 100. If you get 100 stand together, you can take on anyone. So, we said we have 100 people, we do. We have thousands of people that stand together. But to confirm our position, as a sample of the people who stand together, we will take 100 signatures to show you. So we got people on a first comes first serve basis to put their name to the document. So we have the document on the website with 100 signatures. So that means any time you go to court, you take this declaration, throw into court to say that the people stand together, and here's the document, they can never challenge it. And the people stand together under common law. Now, if you use things like this, it sets a position for you, you can never be challenged. And that's why we do these things. Now, if you take something there and you do it, and we convene a court, and the court is run a certain way, and it's done with people, and you've established your position as living men and women, that's a structure, it works. It's accepted within the system, they hate it, but it works and achieves results. If people in small groups, or on their own, or with other people, do something similar, is you've got things like anything, you've got plate, you've got groups in Australia, you've got America, New Zealand, you've got different types. Is if all people do their different things, it's a variation. Is if they're all doing separate things, but when they do it, they do not have the backup. Whereas with the common law court, what you actually have is you have the backup of the people and you have already the state accepting the position that we've achieved. If you do it individually, although you may be successful, it's only doing it for a small minority and it's not doing it for the people. If you set it up under the structure here, there's no charge for it, but if everyone does it the same, it doesn't cost. You've then created a group here of people that stand together. That's why it's difficult if you're trying on your own, because if you do it, you're fighting an uphill battle. Stand with the people. When I go into court just now, I go into court and say, right here, I'm standing with the people, I'm a living man. They used to laugh at me before and I say, here, here's my document. That confirms that people say I'm a living man. The judge is petrified, they can't deal with it. Not one of these documents have ever been challenged. If you take that document in and go in and say, here, bang, you've done it, they cannot challenge the people. That's the difference. If you do it under the banner of the common law court, you've got everything you need. The system's set up. And with more and more people joining and more and more people standing together, you're going to develop what we've got. The difficulty we have just now is when it started off, it was an idea that was done, we then got more people involved, it says, and we've struggled to do that, so we've done that, we've got numbers now. But it says, we're not registered, we don't get money from it. He says, but it's taken a long time to do, even answering emails, he thousands of emails. He says, and everyone says, uh, can you do my email? You haven't responded to me email. And someone speaking to me today saying, right, okay, I'm in court shortly, I need some paperwork for court, can you do my paperwork? I've only got a week left. And then somebody else joined and said, well, I'm in court two weeks later, can you do my paperwork? I've got someone phoning up saying, I've got five children taken away from me. 
He says, and I need some help with that. So their children's away, I've got to do that. And he said, but the thing is, it's not just me. I speak to loads of people that help them prepare this paperwork, but these people are not paid. And obviously, he said, because of what we're doing in developing, he says, we need to get more people on coaching and the people understand how we do it. So the system's here. It is working. But the point is, remember, that the system is here to provide a lawful remedy. It's not here to change anything. It's here to hold people accountable for the crimes that we're committing against the people. And up until now, you may not have known that you're still slaves. So the only way to protect it is by joining the common law court and confirm that you exist. Okay? Right. I'll leave it at that just now. I don't know how we're doing for time with the camera. I says, I'll, I'll answer questions. Yeah, no, I will answer questions. But we'll just see if we call it. Okay. Yeah? It's okay. Money, it's money, it's money. The, the court, they're set up as a company, right? They're a registered company. They can only deal with contract law. And contract law, it says, we'll deal with a, a title, which is a title, it's a person, right? Uh, so basically, you, you, you don't exist, it's not living. It says, as soon as you confirm that you're living, it says, they can't deal with you because they don't have authority. So they cannot deal with a living man or woman. They can only deal with the title. But what they do is when you are born, They've created this legal title, and as you grow up, they say, well, look, you're part of society, you're privileged because we've got a title for you. It says, because of that, you'll get privileges, but you'll have to pay for it, but we'll, we'll look after you. So then you pay taxes and everything else to them, and they've got you, but nobody knows about it. You don't have to accept that. I, even using, we don't use their laws, and says, but again, you, you, you relate to some of their laws, the laws, they're not laws. If you don't accept it as a law and you don't consent, it's not a law. And it's the same with the police. You're supposed to police by consent here in this country. It's if you don't consent, they can't do anything to you. That well, obviously it didn't happen to Jeff. I said, but that's the way it works. Now, we'll deal with this through the courts anyway. But the point is, if you stand and protect yourself as a living man or woman, they can take no action against you. If you look at some of their own rules and guidelines, you can look at the United Nations, which is great. United Nations turned around, there's two of them, I can't remember the numbers because I don't tend to use their stuff, but there's two, there's two sections in there that's quite good. One of them says you cannot be forced to join any society. So therefore, if a British government here operate a system and it's fraudulent and they're committing crimes and they say here, you're going to be a British citizen, right? You're in this group. You don't get any choice. They're telling you you're in the group. That is what they call criminal coercion. They're forcing you to join a group, which is a breach of the United Nations. And not only that, the other thing is, they say in the United Nations that slavery, in the key words, is slavery is banned in all forms. Now the point is, if they're using the legal title that they create, and they've created it by fraud, and they're making, they're punishing you by using that against you, that is slavery, that's a form of slavery, and it's banned by the United Nations. <coughs> so they're not even held accountable by that. So the only way to do it is get the information out, tell the people, and let the people deal with it. Okay? And the money ties in your name in court, the government yeah. fledger account, that trust the money ties, the signature, the mortgages. So the government fledger account used to be in their coffee, coffee shop books in the court. So yeah, it's I don't, a third I don't understand this. No, it's, it's, it, look, I'll call the deal, try and make it easy. I, there are certain things, and I agree with what these guys are saying. It says, when the state set up, you go back to like 1666, there was a great fire of London and a plague. And, sorry? Yeah, 1665, but obviously yeah. the set of trust was 1666. But what they've done is they've set this up, and it was basically, it says, it was, uh, I think it was, it was confirming that you're alive or it was being lost at sea. It was an act that was set up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, basically, what they've done is they've set this up, but basically what they're doing is they're keeping people bound in slavery, and the bankers have come in and set up something using the legal fiction as well, and they've set up a trust. So effectively, everyone has accounts that they don't know about. Now, they do exist, and it's easy to find out, but the point is what the banks do is the banks use your, you as an individual, and they all create money under your name. He says, so they're committing fraud. Now, what they do is the bank says, well, when they spoke to the government, the government says, well, we need money from bankers. So the bank says, well, yeah, okay, we'll give you money, but what do we get? So between them, they came to the discussion and says, well, what we'll do is we've got millions of people here. 
And the bank said, yes, yeah, so what? And they said, well, they have to give us money because they're in our society. If we tell them to pay us, they pay us. So we're going to get money off of everyone over the lifespan. So what they'll do is they'll take an average age for a man or a woman and they expect to make money off you over your lifespan. So because they've come up with a figure, the banks have accepted that and the banks will give money to the government based on you. And they'll invest it. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. More, more, more. I would, you're worth more than you're worth more than your weight in gold. It's invested in your carbon. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's happened is all these things work, but obviously while they're all relevant subjects and they're good, I don't bother with them just now. You can actually, people are trying to do it, they're trying to get access to it. I actually know someone, but I'll tell you a story just quickly. I know someone who has access to it, found out what happened and went, and he found out that under his name, he has a bank account that was created by uh, Inland Revenue. It's with the Royal Bank of Scotland. And it's his name, it's his name, uh, it's his details, it was created with his national insurance number, his ID, and they've created an account. So they have a sort code and a bank number for him. So he says, well, if that's the case, I'm applying for money. So he applied for money, and they actually in Land Revenue deposited £100,000 in his account. But they realised what was going on, so they quickly nabbed it back, and they said there was an error made, but the money's there. But people are arguing about it, it's something that can't be done, but this just shows you the corruption and the extent of it's going on. Look, the common law court's not about that. It says what we're doing first and foremost is you need to protect the people. Now at this moment in time, because of this COVID, but think about whatever you want. <laughs> it says, yeah, yeah, sure. as I'm too polite. But the point is, if you're thinking about this, the amount of businesses has got to go under is unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. The amount of people they're obviously losing their jobs. They're losing their houses, they're losing their children. He says, no, this is with the knowledge of the government and they're doing this. He says, you've got people just now, I, I, I watch about football, it's, it's fine, I don't support anyone in particular, but I watch football. That Marcus Rashford was quite good because he dared to stand up and say, well, wait a minute, when I was a child, I was starving, I couldn't eat. He said, because the mother was obviously poor, didn't have money to feed herself, feed the children, he struggled. He said, went on and he stood up and says, I've got some money, I'm going to feed children. So he went to the government and says, look, I need some help. The government forced, had to consent and say, right, we'll give you some money. But they've turned around and said, well, I'm not doing it now. But how disgusting is that? Mm. He says, you're supposed to be in a, a civilised country and you've got mothers who cannot feed their children. Exactly. And you get the government, when you say we need help, they're shutting down the economy, they're shutting down businesses, they're finishing people's livelihoods off, taking away their jobs, is they've got this COVID, their COVID crap, they're locking them up in their houses, they're telling them what they can and can't do, the children are starving, and these idiots are sitting there lying in their pockets when they know exactly what's happening to the people, and what they're doing to the people, and the so-called co-ops and everything else. It's disgusting. He says, people have a right to speak up. I says, Jeff and Piers, I obviously went, I says, use your rights to try and speak up, to obviously get the information out, and they were dragged into courts, penalised, thrown into prison. It's ridiculous. It should never, ever happen in a civilised country. If that happens, it shows you how bad it is. We've got people here just now, I says, losing everything, their livelihood. You tell me in any country in the world where it's acceptable for children to starve. Everywhere. Yeah, that's it. Everywhere. That's what's happening. The whole world is exactly yeah? the same. Oh, it every is. Exactly yeah. The same. Every, every, every government is exactly well, the same. Well, that's what we're saying. Every whole world. Well, that's what we're saying. <laughs> this is unacceptable. Exactly. The people are starting to stand up. But what you don't have is you don't have a system and you don't have a people unified. The people stand together to use a system to hold them accountable. You can do that with the common law court. He says, do that. People can operate under common law. If someone, <laughs> they speak up as a whistleblower, they lose their job. They lose their licence. Operate under common law. There's nothing wrong with that. How many people have you actually got, do you think, all worldwide? Don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably, yeah. Uh, no, 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 yeah. thousands. We've got tens yeah. of thousands, yeah. yeah. Uh, but obviously we don't. I put on, when we first bought them, we put on the figures to start with. We just put it on, I thought, we'll take it off. They'll go and obviously they'll take it off, but I don't know. The only thing I can say just now, he says, it wasn't me, it was a friend. He was speaking about numbers and I said, we, we don't bother with them. And he says, well, he came and looked at the computer and he was we were going through stuff. He said, but you can look at your data here on the website. And I says, well, what do you want it for? And he said, well, track how many people visit daily, our unique visitors. And I thought, right, okay. So we went in, we took two months. We just did two months. It was not long ago. I said, right, we'll just put on two months, figures, put it down, and we'll work out how many people, unique visitors are visiting. 
unique visitors were averaging two hundred and forty-nine thousand people a day on the site. Two hundred and forty-nine thousand people. <laughs> well, I was I was invited. I said I'm pre I was preparing paperwork to help someone who had children removed. So we had people there, and then a girl, one of the girls, who was one of the speakers at the court, it was Kate, Kate Shamanari. Yeah. Well, she's actually contacted me to speak with the common law, and she was actually speaking to some of the people we knew, and we're having a chance. She says, would you like to come down? I said, well, there's a few speakers. I said, if you want to come down, I should you be able to speak. I couldn't go down. I says, first of all, I, says, I don't have money to go up and down. He says, if I come down here, it's a day trip and a day to get back. I don't have the time because we're doing with that, dealing with that many things and we're dealing with other people and assisted in cases. But the point is, we can actually get out more and more of this information. But because obviously the people don't, don't know about this, Kate herself has said she's got access to people, obviously with the doctors, nurses and all the rest of it. And she wants to start my speech. She was then arrested and obviously let off. But as far as I'm aware, no, I haven't spoken to her since, but as far as I'm aware, she's now going to do a tour, so they're, they're speaking in various venues, there's two of them, and they're taking a third one, the third one's a solicitor. Mm -hmm. And I think because she's been prosecuted and seemingly charged, she's getting a solicitor to represent her. Now, that'll never work. It'll never work, I don't know, but obviously what I was hoping to do is speak to Kate later on and then get an introduction to some of the doctors and nurses and then get people involved from the medical side. Mm -hmm. So we can try and do that and we're actually we're actively trying to get contact with people. This is from the medical side. So we are dealing with that. But the point is, when you turn around and tell people about this, there's that many different groups doing different things, all have different arguments, all trying different things. The one thing we'll say about the common law court, I get I occasionally do some Zoom meetings. Somebody